Last time you saw this machine, it was during a live stream. Sean and I got it out of the box while having an honestly really good time. The first print failed thanks to heat creep from a non-spinning fan. Wow, the motor over here is on fire, so it may have been heat creep. <laughs> Since that stream, I've taken the right extruder apart numerous times and I know exactly why it failed. CraftBot sent parts to fix it, but those parts were dead on arrival. And now I have a brand new Flow IDEX XL machine in the box, in my garage, just waiting for its turn. I owe you all an update on how we got here and what the plan is moving forward. So let's get technical, let's dive deep and let's do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. The CraftBot Flow IDEX XL is an impressive machine on paper. Independent dual extruders with nozzles that'll each go to 300C, automatic mesh bed leveling and nozzle calibration, a build volume 450 on the X, 250 on the Y, and 500 on the Z or Z with the option of being fully enclosed. There's a Raspberry Pi that powers it all and they've got a warranty of 5,000 hours or five years. Whoa. Yeah. Unfortunately, for this machine right here next to me, the only thing that matters in that list is the warranty. <laughs> Once the stream was over, I moved this machine into the side room right over there. It's right, literally right there. And I spent a number of days taking it apart and trying different things, learning what makes it go and installing replacement parts that didn't eventually work coming to a very unfortunate conclusion. The first task was to get rid of this filament jam. This required taking apart the right extruder all the way down to nothing. Filament goes in right there, goes through the gears, and then it comes out right there, and that's where the nozzle con collects, collects, connects. The jammed filament was right inside there. I found the jammed piece of filament inside the gearbox. I got it out. And then I started putting everything back together. The reason the fan wasn't turning is because a pin was bent. The hot end fan and the filament cooling fan plug into a custom board with electrical contacts exposed on the top. Those contacts press against pins above, completing the circuit and making the fans spin when they are told to do so. A small pin, almost like a tiny nail, is supposed to hold everything in place and keep the shroud from shifting, which could result in misaligned pins, right? What I noticed is that pin was loose and it popped out easily. This made reinstalling the fan shroud especially difficult because I had to line up a small hole in that custom circuit board with the pin perfectly or else the circuit board would push the pin up and I would have to start all over because nothing would be in alignment. I did get everything figured out and everything tightened up and I started a print. I thought, well, why not go big, right? So I loaded up Luby 3 ds Fox model, since it can be dual color, and I set it to go. The print finished, and it looks okay for a plug and play $3,999 3D printer using the provided materials from the manufacturer and sliced in the provided slicer from the manufacturer. It doesn't look as good as it should. Personally, I like it, but I know this machine can do a whole lot better. There was a lot of spare filament on the side. I thought maybe it was doing a purge to the side, but it was only on the right side. That's when I knew what happened. A filament jam on the right extruder. Yeah. The machine has what it calls FMS, Filament Monitoring System. It enables the machine to be aware of jams and clogs by sensing moving filament. There is a sensor and a bearing at the top of the heat sink, and if that sensor detects non-moving filament during a print, it can alert the machine and attempt an automated way of clearing the detected jam. It'll pause the print, it'll move the head to the side, and attempt to extrude filament. If it detects the filament is extruding properly, and it thinks the jam has been cleared, it will then continue the print. However, in, in this case, it just kept detecting a jam even though it could automatically clear it. The FMS has a low, medium, and high setting for detections, but 
That didn't seem to make a lick of difference. I did take it apart again to recheck everything, and it was fine. Again, thankfully, I can turn the FMS on and off per extruder via the touch screen on the printer. So I just turned it off for the right extruder. At this point, the machine is working. Both extruders are printing. There are some hiccups with the filament detection on the right side, but everything is working. And I was going to begin testing. Then I hear from CraftBot. They saw the stream and they got a lot of messages about the stream. <laughs> Go figure. They said what I experience is typically from shipping damage. And I know it's quite possible my printer got banged around a bit on its flight from Hungary to Seattle. CraftBot said they were sending parts to repair the printer and sending another printer, all from a Canadian distributor. The reason for the new machine is that they aren't sure if other shipping damage occurred and they want to make sure I have a known good machine to test. Parts to fix the machine were sent next day international, so they arrived incredibly fast. In the box was a new fan shroud, a new board with the pins, and a new nozzle assembly. I got all the parts installed and started recalibrating the printer. And when it's calibrating the filament monitoring system, it extrudes filament from both extruders and verifies it can sense the movement. The left one was working just fine. The right one though, click, 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 wait, click, wait. click, click, click. It was jammed. The right extruder was jammed. <laughs> what? What is this? Am I being punked? Is this a prank? Is this real life? Uh, I could tell the filament was at least getting to the filament monitoring sensor. So I can remove just the fan shroud and the nozzle assembly and I should be good to go. I got it out and I took it apart and I cannot believe what I saw. This was shipped via UPS Express International. It went from somewhere in Canada to my house very, very quickly. These were to repair a machine and get it back to a fully working state. This was to fix what CraftBot said is typical when shipping damage occurs. <clears throat> the nozzle was pre-jammed. CraftBot sent an already jammed nozzle to me. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Such a dad thing. At this point, this nozzle wasn't usable. I mean, I could attempt to manually clean the nozzle with a heat gun. However, CraftBot sends along a nozzle kit for each extruder. I had a brand new 0.4 millimeter nozzle I could swap right in. I'm excited because the filament monitoring sensor is at the top of the heat sink and this one will hopefully work. The nozzle goes in easy and I perform calibration again and we are ready to go again. I load up a dual color 3D Benchy and I set it to print. It's going! It's printing! My excitement quickly turned back to disappointment. As it got to the layer where the right extruder starts to print, and right away, it says there was a jam and attempts to clear it. At this point, I turn off the filament monitor on the right side and I just let the 3D pen sheet complete. Here it is. I mean, I get it. I get that a company wants its product to be shown in the best light possible. The problems experienced on the stream were unfortunate and it's very possible that those problems were caused during shipping. The clogged nozzle assembly sent as a repair part is more of a serious oversight. And my worry is that if I, as the reviewer with an audience, get the clogged nozzle, then what does the non-reviewer without an audience receive? My hope is that all of these issues are just a string of accidents and not indicative of a larger problem. With that in mind, I have a brand new Flow IDEX XL machine in the box that needs to be taken out of that box. I think it's best if we do that together, <laughs> say Wednesday, October 7th. Look for a live stream announcement soon.
Uh, before I go though, I do want to make mention, Angus over at Makers Muse produced a wonderful review video about this machine and his experiences. Our experiences differ a little bit, but he did run into some issues and I highly suggest you take a look at his video as well. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, beyond all that, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Can't wait to see you on that live stream. Look for an announcement soon. Hug each other more and from a safe distance. High five.